Hi, Sien. It is very lovely to see you again. And thank you very much uh, for joining us today on this session, which is an extension of our white paper focused on how American companies uh, can succeed in Asia. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, jump right into our questions. Um, so the key finding of our paper was that US corporate culture is characterized by a can-do attitude and positive culture. With economic storm clouds gathering on the horizon uh, in the form of rising interest rates and inflation, does this positive culture give US companies an edge in these tough times? What's your opinion on that? There's been some real tragedies that have been happening with the war in the Ukraine and then the recent assassination of the prime minister. Uh, we're all going through some pretty tough times, even within our own homes, dealing with the pandemic, which is still all, in all caps for most of us. And the other thing about really being very positive about things is to be proactive, right? Not to be reactive to things all the time. Because you're thinking positively and preparing both for best and worst case scenarios, you're going to be more proactive in developing these business continuity plans with both the positive aspects of how you're going to get through the storm, but also the negative aspects and mitigating the risk of it. So I think being positive allows you to look forward and be more future oriented, which then leads me to the final point about the benefits of being positive, which is that it allows you hopefully to feel a sense of innovation, like being more innovative, being more creative, because you don't constantly have this weight of pressure on yourself, thinking negatively all the time. And, you know, trying to be more optimistic is also very good for your health. So I think it's important for us to be realistic, optimists, but at the end of the day, U.S. firms who are able to be realistic, but at the same time, forward-looking, positive, will surely come out ahead. Thank you. I think that that was a very good answer. Um, and uh, sort of looking long term, as you said, I think that, that certain people would argue that um, the, the long term demographics of Asia, for example, uh, really do favor its, its recovery right uh, from from this uh, current state. Um, so some would also say that the 20th century was uh, America's century and the 21st is Asia's. Again, you know, it's a rather controversial uh, sort of statement there. Um, but what we felt was that MGI has been very successful at supporting its members to grow in Asia. So how, how, how do you think um, MCHAM can continue to support its members uh, to help them emphasize the region's importance to, to global headquarters? Because there's often a struggle, right, for the heads of regions here and, you know, to, to sort of be the cheerleader for, for the region. How, how would you say that you, you will continue to support it? But you're absolutely mm -hmm. right. I think many of our member companies have said before that if Amcham could help them in with the right statistics, the right case studies that show that Asia really is a very important region for the company. Now, for some companies, possibly Asia Pacific is less than 20% of their global revenue. But for other companies, it could easily exceed 25, 30% of global revenue. So it, it's inconsistent across industries in terms of the relative importance of the region. But what cannot be denied is that the majority of the world's population sit within Asia Pacific. Now, if you include China, the most populous nation in the world, and number two, India, in the Asia Pacific region, we've got nearly 5 billion people in our geographic region. If a global company is not paying attention to that, then frankly, they should not be global, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing is that in terms of GDP, our region also constitute about 40% of global GDP. If you want to talk dollars and cents, that's something you cannot ignore. And we also know the growth rates are here in Asia. For many of the emerging markets, growth rates, now granted, we have gone through a pandemic, but typically growth rates in emerging markets in Asia are in the double digits. You're not going to see that in some of the more established markets like the US and Japan and even you know, in Europe. So double digit growth, again, is very important to shareholders. How do we then take the feeling, the emotional aspects of helping our corporate counterparts understand the importance of Asia? Because human nature as it is, wherever you sit is where the center of the world is. It's very hard for me to picture what my mom is doing in California because I'm in Singapore and I'm thinking, oh, all, all I'm thinking about is Singapore, right? And we see that also with you know, regional leaders even, you know, your regional boss who happens to be sitting in Singapore may have responsibility over half the world, but at the same time, they want to see headlines in the Singapore newspaper because a lot of the times they're getting up in the morning and looking at the headlines here in Singapore. So some of the ways that Amcham helps to, you know, re-emphasize the importance of the region in uh, for corporate head, uh, headquarters is 
to be able to put that headline in front of their face. Now, it could be through media, but it could also be through the various programming and engagement opportunities that we have. Sometimes it's through event engagement and sometimes through perhaps uh, publications, surveys, fact sheets. And one of the ones I wanna point out is our current ongoing survey that we have been doing annually for over 20 years that for example, business leaders can take to their corporate counterparts with the facts and figures, which is the ASEAN Business Outlook Survey where member companies from around the region will provide feedback on their business plans for the coming year and the coming five years. Now, you know, that is gonna be very convincing because you can see where the investment dollars are headed and where the business growth is going to happen. But I come back to the emotional side of things for corporate leaders to really feel like Asia could be their global headquarters. And some companies have moved their headquarters, global headquarters from places like LA to Singapore, from London to Singapore. So it does happen. Your corporate leaders need to come to the region. And when they come to the region, I hope you will engage AmCham because the business community here is very strong and can give them this feeling like, yes, Singapore and the Asia Pacific is a place where we can experience tremendous business success and growth. Thank you. Thank you very much for your answers. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here today and I uh, look forward to further cooperation with AmCham here. Looking forward to seeing you.